showtime, folks. Getting this Facebook going. Give it a few minutes for people to join. Girl magic. Bom, bom, bom. Hey, beautiful. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Just making sure. I want to make sure everything's right. I'm about to go live on Facebook. Uh, oh, yeah. Just the two of us right now. <laughs> All right. Let me go live on. What just happened here? All right. Go live. Check my phone and make sure it's going live on Facebook. Mm, I should have done something to myself if I would have known it was just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're going to conduct this whole chat by ourselves. <sighs> okay. There we go. It is live. Kind of got to keep an eye on this because... All right. Live on Facebook. Oh, some more people coming. Edmund. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, just, it's just 8 o'clock, so... Yeah. I like to start a little early because I know people like start to jump on hey how are you Don? hi i'm doing good haven't seen you since we went to the movies i don't think right i'm i'm not teaching tonight so i was like finally oh my god yeah hi donna hi hey, donna hi renee donna is my college roommate oh wow i did not know that <laughs> yeah awesome. so cool I'm hoping we have a good turnout tonight. We'll see. You know, we had 45 people RSVP for this thing, but you just never know. All right. More people. We'll just give it a couple of minutes to kind of let people as they're coming in. Hmm. I need to change mine to grid view. I like to see everybody at once. You ladies been holding up well through this pandemic? Yes. Yeah. Yeah working same fortunate to be working from home yes <laughs> been a blessing um, my company just said it will be january or later when we go back in the office same i mean we are our my children are doing um virtual digital learning yeah so yeah. my kids yeah. will start in um october 24th is when they start virtually wow gosh they're starting that late wow I know, when we, I'm like, what? But they that's when we usually go back to school. That's the normal date for our schools to start. Wow. Today was supposed to be our first day of school, but they pushed it back one week. Um, oh, ours is the 23rd. And see, the county keeps going back and forth. So like two weeks ago, they decided everybody's doing digital learning. Like before it was, you get to choose if you're doing in-person or digital. So people split. I was always doing digital at home. That's just yeah. what I'm going to do. And then- oh. so, and then like two weeks ago, they changed it to um, everybody's doing virtual learning. So I'm like, cool, everybody's out of the school. All of the teachers will have to prepare to do digital learning. Well, they sent out an email two days ago 
saying that they're going to, um, they came up with a plan for those who chose in person will now slowly start going back to school starting like August 26th or something like that. I'm like, we, our county has the highest amount of COVID cases in the state of Georgia. How are you sending kids back to school at this point? I, I just don't even, wow. don't even know how that's happening, but we've had a lot of parents protest um, and fight not being able to send their kids back to school. So I think what I think is that that email was sent out just to kind of hush them and say, we're making an attempt to, to put your kids back in school. But if they don't ever do it, it's like, well, we tried, but we can't, you know? So yeah, I don't know. I have a lot of opinions on that, but I'm just Meanwhile, like, the private schools here are back. Yeah. Because and, the, parents, the parents here were saying, I'm not going to pay full tuition if my kids are not in the classroom. And so they, they started up like yesterday and today, the Catholic schools are in full swing. Wow. Full swing. I mean, I mass, even, like, it's crazy. The fact that so many people are putting that before health, like, and even that it's like, okay, that's fine. That's you, what you want to do. But what about these teachers that have families that don't want to put their families in jeopardy? It's like, they have no choice in this and no say so. And that's what I feel the worst for is all of this. So. Mm -hmm. Welcome to everyone that's coming on. I'm going to give it a couple more minutes. We'll start at like 8.05 um, just to give some more people some more time. Yeah, it's all crazy to me. I'm like, y'all can um, go back to school if you want to. Mine will be at home with me. <laughs> but I saw there was a report from one school in Georgia that just went back this week and there was already a case a second grader that had COVID, so they had to close that classroom and put them on quarantine for two weeks. It's ridiculous. And there's another picture of a Georgia school going viral where all these oh, yeah. are in the hallway. In and the halls. Like, practically no one has mask on. Yeah. And then I even saw that. before our county made the decision to kind of implement in person schooling, just two days prior to that, we had an, uh, something where like possibly 260 teachers were exposed to COVID just from going back to work this past week. So I'm like, this just came out two days ago and then y'all are sending us an email saying that you're going to start sending kids back to school. I'm like, okay. But I think it was just to kind of shut people up, <laughs> to be honest, because I just don't see how they're, they're going back to school anytime soon, especially not August 26th. Like, that's just crazy to me. Um, look at all these faces. Okay, we slowly... Bernadette! Hello! Hi. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to get started. People will jump on as they jump on. I'm watching it, so we should be good to go. Um, of course, tonight we are discussing The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Um, I Look, every, we should do that one time where everybody like holds up their book and I take a picture. I don't know why I don't think about this stuff <laughs> ahead of time. But um, so I finished this yesterday. I loved it. The ending could have been a little bit better for me. Like I could have gotten a little more closure from some parts, but for the most part, like I was intrigued. I loved it. What were y'all y'all's thoughts on this? I loved it. I loved the book. Um, the ending was realistic. I was in another um, discussion with the group where we were discussing, and a lot of people were disappointed by the end, but it's like realistically, what do you think could have happened? The only thing for me that I wish would have happened is I wanted to know a little bit more about Stella. It's kind of like a cliffhanger where it just left it wide open as to did her husband eventually find out like, you know, what else happened with her daughter other than discussing it? Like, what was her daughter's response to all of, you know, what she said about her life and coming up and, and passing and all that kind of stuff. So I think I just wanted to know, I was fine with everything else. I think I just wanted to know more about Stella and okay. where her life went after that. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah. I, I think it went back to where it was. I think she kind of, when she went to visit her sister, I think that was her goodbye to them. Yeah. Goodbye and everything. Don, were you about to say something? I was agreeing with you as far as, um, I was disappointed with the end myself. And I, I thought that at least the two cousins would have been a little bit more, again, initiative and maybe um, bonding and trying to find out a little bit more about the history. 
And I just thought that was real interesting how the mother finally went back to her hometown, saw her mom died, and then she came back and she still didn't want to have anything else to do with that. So that was, you know, my um, curiosity about how, if the father, did the daughter tell the dad or she's living this life till she dies? I mean, I just thought that was interesting. I know, especially in, when did it end? In the 90s, I think it finally got up to, or was it the late 80s? Either way, they were kind of out of that era where, to me, it was like, it doesn't really matter at this point. Like, just go ahead and tell them. Um, but, you know, I guess she's just scared to lose everything that she's been living this good life for so long mm -hmm. that she didn't want to lose that. But she really yeah. had, she was pretty oh. miserable. <laughs> she really was though the only time that i felt like she was happy even though she was pretending not to be was when she was friends with was it loretta was that her name? Mm -hmm. yeah and her friendship with that and one of the questions i stumbled upon was if they continued their friendship do you guys think that she would have eventually told loretta her yes secret? i think she would i feel like loretta knew yeah uh -huh. and, was waiting. and the friends because and you know i am from louisiana and this is a real place. It's not called Mallard. It's called Freelo Cove. Okay. This is a real town. Mm. And it's in the same parish, but it's not geographically where she said it was. Okay. But it's but we know we yeah. can look at people and say, now you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I feel like Loretta knew. Yeah, I think so too. You can, you just kind of, yeah, you get that feeling, like that vibe, like, mm -hmm. yeah. She didn't say it, but I, I feel like Loretta did. Oh, she knew something. She, I think she knew something wasn't right, but you know how, you know, women of color, sometimes it's like, if you want to tell it, you tell it. If it's, you know, you okay with it, you okay with it. And when, I think when she said, you know, when she brought the pie or something over what made you come over. And I think there was a lot more cues to why she probably was suspecting. She suspected something. And um, I think she was at least at one point was trying to say something, but you know, she talked about she didn't have any sisters. She didn't have, you know, any, any person. She really didn't talk about the family. So I think Loretta was, uh, that's just mysterious to me. You have no family, no one that she's ever really talked about. But she told her one day that she reminded her of her sister. Of her she sister, said, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Now yeah. Was <laughs> she's like, how yeah. do I remind you of your sister? She was, I feel like she was trying to get her to, uh -huh. to give like it up. Faith. Yeah, <laughs> to confirm what she was already, yeah, mm -hmm. feeling. And I felt that too, like I just, I felt like she kept on, continued to hang out with Loretta because it kind of felt like home to her, like the stuff that she's missed out on all these years by passing. Um, I was a little confused though, and I try to read it over again, but maybe you guys can clear that part up for me. Um, why, why did Loretta, or was it, she was confused about or suspicious that the husband was watching her. It, I, I was a little confused in that area and that's why they had to move and that's why she, she, she said something to them that she thought that guy was strange looking at her or something. I, I, think, I think Stella was trying to deflect from them people realizing that she was going over to, to her oh. house by saying, well, I feel like her husband's been watching me. And then and then it, the whole neighborhood just turned on it. Like, yeah. oh, oh, black man is watching this woman. Move. And yeah. then they start throwing the bricks and everything else. But she that, did that. that she did like, that to take that attention off of her that she wow. had been, people had been seeing her going oh. over. Shame. Okay. Shame. Same kind of, same pattern of even though she wasn't white, but of white women lying on black men mm -hmm. and causing harm yeah. to them. Yeah. She was being a Karen. Karen, yes. And, and think about it. What happened to her dad? The yeah, same thing exactly. happened to Stella's dad. He was Ex lynched from somebody exactly. accusing him of something. That, she, whew, I got upset with her. Right. <laughs> I, I, I had I no did. problem. Uh -huh. Dad, I understand that. The and the part with the little girl. Go ahead. 
I'm sorry, I don't understand how she would even want to pass after watching her father be murdered. Right. And then when she told her daughter, you don't play with niggers, I about <laughs> fell out. <laughs> I, so mama, I can't play with you? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> right. But she's a good one. Hold on to that, that she had stolen this life that she, by any means necessary, she was determined <laughs> To keep but she was absolutely mm -hmm. miserable. Mm -hmm, she and was. To me, her husband seemed like he was feeling, you know, he was like, why is there, everybody overreacting? We'll be fine if they move in. It'll be okay. Like, he was perceptive to times are changing. But she was more on the, you know. I, I guess because, like Jessica said, she didn't want to find She didn't out. want to be called out. She knew mm -hmm. him. Black people have a six sense. No, they no, no like. recognized it. <laughs> Hilarious. Yep. She couldn't mm -hmm. lose. She couldn't risk losing that privilege and that and that lie coming. Good out. life, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she was so miserable. Right. She was like, like she wasn't living the best life before. Remember, they were poor. Her and um, Desiree. She wasn't mm -hmm. living a good life before. I think emotionally she was in a better place. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's been, I think it was actually from when the beginning of the story seemed like she always wanted that life. She wanted that life from the beginning because I think um, she mentioned about, you know, uh, going into the store and pretending to be white and got away with it and you know i saw in in that it, it's so hard to like because of course i'm not mixed but i was trying to fathom how you know her father she she didn't want to have any representation of him at all but in her mind she loved her dad it seemed like and um so that was a life she wanted to live all along and it was it was so funny how she really um didn't want black people to recognize or to be around her when um her sister daughter i forgot her name uh, met her she yeah. said who are you how, how, yeah. how you know yeah. <laughs> because she was so dark skinned and she was like there's no way you got to yeah. be telling me a tale here you know because so. remember she didn't know that her um sister married the really dark a skin really skin. dark skin. Mm -hmm. she didn't know that part Right, they kind of went their separate ways way before that, so right, they ended up. She, she now, was it annoyed that Desiree dragged that beautiful? Desiree. I have a picture of a, a blue black, like Senegal type, you know, how Senegalese <laughs> men have that beautiful skin. And I was mad that Desiree would track that baby to that racist town that she Me knows. Too. Were, Me too. I don't understand that, like, <laughs> why? Would you even do that? And then stay there. Like right. I could see going there for a little while, getting there, and eat, and then moving. Is she going to college? I yeah, but she just acted like, oh, he'll be fine. Fine. And mama no, rubbing stuff go? on the baby's skin. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> now, where was she going to go? Because remember, I know. Leave that town in the first place until her sister came with her. She had to have, mm -hmm. she stayed there until she got her sister. She convinced her to come along too. I think she went somewhere where she knew someone. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter it wasn't the ideal situation, but I don't think she was as strong as we thought she was in the beginning. Maybe she was making all the decisions for her mm -hmm. and Stella. Yeah, right. I don't think she was that, well, I think Stella was just quiet and then allowing her to make all the decisions. But with Stella gone, she didn't have anybody to do, she didn't have anybody to be with her. I don't think she thought she had anywhere to go. I don't yeah. think she didn't want to start over alone by herself. It gave her this sense of comfort. Like, obviously, right. it didn't work out for her. She ended up marrying an abusive man and just her mm -hmm. life was a train wreck. So by coming back home, right, that comfort that she knew what was going to happen, that every day was going to be the same, you know, she just knew what to expect. Whereas yeah. with her husband, she's like, is he going to beat me today? Or is he, you know, am I going to be okay? So, yeah, I kind of get that. It was a comforting thing for her. But I think in, in that sense, I understand. Um, 
I can't tell who just spoke before you, Renee, but um, I agree with that. But I think, you know, like some of us mentioned earlier, you know, with her going and then maybe think about, you know, moving later, especially when her daughter was experiencing, you know, such a difficult time. And I'm trying to remember too, because I read it, uh, I read like the beginning of the month. So I don't remember, did the daughter tell her what she was experiencing at school? Did she, she mention? Both the grandmother and her mother were comforting her. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so in that sense, that's what I was thinking. Maybe eventually she should have, you know, tried to see how to get out to a different place. Or by then, she's probably been there so long, she probably didn't want to deal with another set of trying to figure out, okay, is that your child? Um, you know, so yeah. that's what really was conflicting. You're working for the freaking FBI. I don't know. It's not, it's 2020. They were 19, what, 70 something, 60. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could, I'm like, can you not just transfer to a different field office? Like, you know, she went to the local police department. I just felt like she could have just transferred somewhere else and she was already working for the FBI or something. But I know. agree with you if she was stronger. I don't think she was that strong a person. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I do have a question about, did they, I know that they're twins, but did they say whether or not they were identical or fraternal? They were identical. They were identical. They they were identical. identical. Mm -hmm. So that makes me even more intrigued. For those of you who don't know this already, Britt Bennett got a contract with HBO to make this, a yeah. movie for, you know, a, a, yeah. a mm -hmm. I saw that. Yeah, so it's gonna, so that even makes me think, like, who's gonna play them in this movie now? Like, if they're right, they're right. here, you know, I'm stopping. You know, yeah, I mean, I, she was like, is Megan Markle? She could, but is there somebody else that looks close? To what she looks like the only people I can think of <clears throat> are Tamara at this point. That, yep, like, then I want, then I want to know. And I think she they had plenty of movies that. where a single person played two people. They just That's doubled true. them. I was thinking the same thing in my head. And, and they, they have might enough. actually get a white person. They might actually get a white person with some curly hair. There's, um, there's nothing to say that once it moves to the series, they're going to worry about them being identical twins. Because they all change a little something. They yeah, all they do. exactly the same. I don't think yeah. they're going to. Make them identical twins. Megan Markle would be perfect, though. Yeah. Yeah, Megan would be perfect because I didn't know she was black until she started dating Prince Harry. <laughs> yeah, she should be a, I was like, she was? Right. She'd be a good choice if she would go back into acting. Yeah. I got some cousins they can use. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But they might, they might not want to be. Right. Identify it as such. It's real. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's funny you say that because actually now that I think about it, yeah, I do too. <laughs> it's a very mm -hmm. real thing. It's especially Stella's part. I could I could see Desiree, but Stella part, that that was the whole time I kept reading. I'm like, is she for real? I mean, that was a that it was a good book. I'm for her to even do this, I see why it was such a a uh, push for so many book clubs and readers because it really was a, it, I really enjoyed it. Excellent. You know? Yeah. yeah. Welcome everybody. I didn't say hey Ro, I see you on here. Some people popped on. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I had a long day and I was really trying to catch this. So I wanted to come in and and, and see what you guys were talking about. I really enjoyed the book too. It actually is probably one of the first ones I read since being in school that I really enjoyed. Oh, good. Um, mm -hmm. I, I did. It was a great book. Mm -hmm. Good. Glad. I love these kind of books that get us talking. And <laughs> this is actually the second Britt Bennett pick that we've done. We did The Mothers, um, but I actually like this one way better. Um, I like The Mothers, too. Don't get me wrong. But I, yeah, this one was really piqued my interest. Um, I can yeah. see why it got all the hype that it did, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And the other part that was, I thought that was, um, you know, interesting to me was her, the struggle her daughter was going through. And, and that's real too, because I think she was trying to live her life out somehow in her daughter. And, you know, the daughter was, she was smoking, drinking. She couldn't figure out what career she wanted to be in. And she was up and down. And it was, I think it was just all for her mother's love. She didn't think her mother loved her. She didn't think her mother want to spend time with her. And I thought to me, that was really, you know, a little bit heart shook for me because although she was doing crazy stuff, it just, you know, opened my, my eyes a little bit more to see. Sometimes people's children's behavior, you know, it's attention they're looking for. They're, they're wanting some, some extra things that, you know, her mom, and she said it several times to the mom, but the mom was more glamoring everything in money. And that, that was not enough for her. And then on the flip side of that, what I saw, was a really disturbed mother who can't yeah. find no inner peace. Mm -hmm. You know, she really couldn't find no peace within because she was constant. She even said it, oh, I'm going to have to move again. She was ready to move when she found out um, the girl, her niece found them. She, so she's constant. She's not settled in her spirit. She's just not settled. And that also was not good enough to share the nurturing with her daughter. That's that was my observation. I, I mean, but she, she was kind of hiding her life from everybody, including her daughter. Right. Mm -hmm. Her daughter would ask the things her mother would bring up, the things your mother talked to you about. Your mother talked to you about their past mm -hmm. life and what happened while they were growing up. She mm -hmm. couldn't have that conversation with her daughter. Right, right. And she and she got her lies mixed up too. And the daughter said, yes. Wait a minute. <laughs> what? Said, you were from such and such place. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. She's well, like, Where did they die? And I blew this. But you said, You right. said Mallard. And she's like, I know I heard that. And right. she didn't remember Mallard. She remembered it was someplace. This thought it was the M. Yeah. And then her mother started trying to make up things she was remembering wrong. Mm. You know? Wrong, yeah. So she, I guess she was trying to avoid those sorts of conversations with her daughter. Her mm -hmm. whole life was all she was doing was hiding. All every day was another day that you don't let anybody find out. Yep. A complaint. Yeah, she was it, it was really hard it. for her to be authentic. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, and she was willing to. I'm to sorry, anyway. I'm Leslie. <laughs> nice Hi. to see everybody. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I was just going to add that she, she couldn't be her authentic self. And mm -hmm. so. You know, she she didn't. I mean, even with the family across the street, she wanted to always be with her, and uh, because she felt like she could have a little bit of that authenticity, because she could have a little bit of a connection. But even with that, she couldn't truly reveal who she was. Mm -hmm. You remember when she slapped her daughter for called the baby nigga? Yeah, I think if her if. Uh, if Kennedy may have not have done that, I think eventually she would have come around and confided in Loretta. But yeah. when, when Kennedy called the little child the N word, Loretta was done by that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I think She's Britt left a lot of things open in this book. Like, um, like she didn't address the lie of Reese. Yes. She didn't address that. And I think some things she left open, I mean, as a good writer, just leaving some things open will leave her other stories to piggyback on. Maybe the Loretta relationship, um, that friendship could be a whole nother, you know, story. Um, the Reese, I just, I needed them to finish that up, wrap that up. They didn't, she didn't wrap that up. Um, so I, I feel like there was, that was a lie that never came to, it never came out to anyone. So, but like, yeah, she needed. You said it was a lie for Reese. Well, Reese's truth. What what was going on with him never really came out. Well, his truth was that he was a a, a girl born. He was a a boy was, born in a girl a girl's body. So I guess his truth was actually trained. Um, what do you call it? Transgendering. Transgender. That's what he was. Right. Yeah. That, that's I don't. Why would you call that a lie? 
Well, I mean, they, he didn't, they didn't share it with anybody else in the story. I'm, they didn't share it with was um, it, my mom. it didn't it come out anymore. It just well, that yeah. one little thing. They didn't, they like didn't share it with, with her secret. family. Right. right. Even in the end, the mom kept saying, well, hopefully one day you guys will get the and all this stuff. And there was never a point where they were like, well, that's not really possible. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. yeah, they kept, she yeah. kept saying, when are you guys going to get married and all of this stuff. And um, what was it? Uh, Reese not having an ID or something like that? Or, right. Or, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah because at that time, that. same sex marriage wasn't legal yet. So they couldn't have done no. it. Right. So yeah, I need her. gender wasn't really a thing that people talked about. You know, it's yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not as common as it is today. But it was funny that Mama was like, "Uh uh-uh, uh, two unmarried people not sleeping in the bed at my house." She's like, "You not married to Early?" <laughs> yeah, <hello? laughs> I thought like, you and Early probably getting it in every night. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what you mean? Like the pot calling the kettle black, right? Yes. <laughs> Um, but I did appreciate um, Reese and Jude's relationship because they both kind of bonded off of traumatic past. So mm-hmm. I loved watching that relationship and them just kind of being insecure, but loving one another to be confident and, and you know, end up having good lives, um, building one another up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was- yeah. And I think her cousin saw that too, because the cousin was, she she was at one point saying how did you get basically that pretty boyfriend yeah. you know because yeah, nobody knows the truth about reese and his past which right you know. so she, and she saw that they stayed together all these years so she was i think um amazed by that I think so. Okay, so Rosa put a, a comment that says, I was confused at first if Jude knew Reese was trans, but at the end, she knew about her surgery. Um, right. I think there was little hints that kind of came along the way that kind of hinted right. towards Reese. Um, but at the end, wasn't she working to pay for Reese's yes. surgery? Mm-hmm. And, and so, yeah. yeah, so she, cause she wanted to. I was to like, oh, come on, like, cause she, before she graduated, she knew that he was transitioning yeah. because mm-hmm. she was trying to help him and he got upset with her when she was doing the catering yeah. and all of that. He told her. She knew. But I still was wondering with young people, God forgive me. I just know I'm like, girl, you 20 years old and you not touching nothing. Like, how are y'all this intimacy? And so <laughs> it took a long time before he really confided in her and she yeah. I, I, if she knew something or was she just that naive just trying to play it cool Mm. trying to play it cool um yeah that that part all of that was just interesting it was spaced out yeah it was it was really good all of it i just remember a statement that she made um when she was living in Mahler before she left for school early came up behind her mother and she said um, she didn't know if she wanted to be her mother or to be early. Hmm. But he was smelling her hair. He smelled her hair and she said, I don't know if I want to be in the position of my mother or in a position of early. And I'm like, I said, well, let me store that comment in the back because I don't know what that exactly means. And then when Reese came up, I said, I wonder if that was like a subtle hint that she, I don't know. I didn't know how to take that comment at first. So I thought that was interesting. <laughs> I remember that, but I didn't remember what it what it meant. Yeah. Me too. yeah. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Rosa said that early was the most at peace person in the whole book. Yeah, he definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he lived I mean, his life on his terms. Yeah, he was still mysterious because it's like, what are you doing when you're on the road? You know, he was still mysterious in his own way, but he was, yeah, very peaceful. Um, and took care of the women in his life too, which was kind of cool. Even the mother who didn't really care for him, even till her last breath. Her death. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and doing all of this stuff. So I really liked Early. He was, you know. I did too. I liked him for um, Desiree. Um, here's a question that I think is a good one. So it says, Stella thinks about passing and that at first it seemed so simple. She wondered why her parents didn't. Now, okay, so I know, did it ever talk about the dad and his complexion and what he looked like? Yeah, she said okay. that he was he was so light-skinned that 
and when it was cold, she could see the blue veins, blue veins. in his yeah. arm. And you know, honest, really, that took me back. My my great grandfather, my grandmother's father, was mixed. His father was white. His mother was black. Yeah. And when he died, I remember the death certificate coming to the house, and my great grandmother saying, "Well, they called him Brock. His name was Isaac." She said, "Brock wasn't white. Brock was colored." And I didn't know what colored meant. And I was like, oh, she's talking about the veins, because he had all those veins. I thought that's what colored meant. I was a little girl. I was like, what? But they put on his death certificate that he was white. The, wow. the hospital did. Wow. wow. But he, she, and I, I was, a, I must have been, I must have been like six or seven when Papa died. And she was like, Brock was colored. And I'm like, I guess it's the veins. <laughs> I don't know what she <laughs> That is hilarious. I didn't know what she uh -huh. but that's what she, that's how she described it. That he was so light that you could see the blue veins in him. So he looked white. Wow. That's so funny because I actually haven't even read the book yet. I just started it today, so I was listening to it on Audible, and I remember that was like the part that stuck out to me the most uh -huh. about how he, he was so white that his that you could see the blue veins. Mm -hmm. So I'm like excited to finish listening to the book. This is like my first time ever We're doing audio. Oh, we That's a book. Yeah. 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 I didn't have this book. I downloaded this book in yeah. Audible like forever ago. I just yeah. I've never done. I'm I'm a reader. I have to like have the physical book. So I'm stepping out of my comfort zone and trying something a little different. So that's why it's like taking me a long time to listen to it because it's just not the same experience for me. But I think I'm going to have to go and buy the book and actually listen to it and read it at the same time. Yeah, that's I do I both. That's what I do yeah. most of the time, Lee. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I found that this book, usually this book was easy to listen to without, uh, yes. for me, without worrying about the words. I thought the um, author was... Yeah. So far, I've I'm 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 in the now. I was able to get through um, chapter one. I'm halfway through chapter two because I was just listening to it today while I was at the pool, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I'm like in the pool, like listening, like wow, this is like some deep stuff in here too. So I'm really excited to read it or hear the rest of it, and just kind of look at it from my perspective. Um, as for me, I I live in Baltimore now, but I'm actually from Charleston, West Virginia, which is Ooh. not a lot of black folk are there, so. Yeah. It's just, it's not a lot of us. So the, those of us who are there, we're very close knit. Well, my family is actually a mixed race family. So as you can see, I'm pretty light. So I was always one of those little girls who was too, I was, I was, I was too dark to be white, but I was too, I was too dark. I was too light to be, it was like, no, I couldn't fit in in any kind of group. So oh. I kind of can understand where she's coming from in this where you're just trying to find where you fit in these worlds. Mm. Mm -hmm. and that's an interesting perspective mm -hmm. yeah, yeah she's, just, I, um, she's just trying to fit in find her place in a world where she's just kind of like that odd person out and so that's kind of um kind of where I feel sometimes like I'm that odd person out like even <clears throat> I'm a teacher as well so at the te at the school where I teach I'm the only black person there um mm. a predominantly white school for the, uh, of course all white staff so it is hard trying to fit, find your place in a in a comfort or a community where you where you're just not recognized and where you don't see yourself represented. Yeah, I remember yes. moving to Georgia and kind of having that when I first came in. It was like you know the 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 girl the black girl that talks white and just like being yeah for that. Yeah, and, I hate yeah. that. I hate being told you talk white or you talk yeah. really <laughs> well for a black girl. Yeah, I had like, I had a lot like of that growing impulse. up as well. <laughs> yeah, it's you so know, we we moved from. <laughs> When I was little, we moved from Maryland to South Carolina, um, mm -hmm. where my mother was from, and I didn't have a Southern accent. And so, you know, I'm in second grade, and my teacher's like, "Well, Leslie, how do you say this? How do you say mm -hmm. this?" Because mm -hmm. I spoke differently because I didn't have the same accent, and it's really frustrating. But um, it was interesting reading this because it. Uh, reminded me, and I don't know like the full story because these are distant cousins, but my mother's, uh, one of my mother's favorite cousins growing up, I learned when we became adults that um, her husband's brother actually, and her husband was fair, she was dark skinned, her husband was fair, but his brother was actually passing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, like I said, they were distant cousins, so, you know, I didn't really grow up around them, and um, but I just found that interesting that, you know, even in this day and age, 
you know, today, because this was like in the 90s when I learned this, so it wasn't that long ago, um, that you still have people that feel the need oh. to do that. Absolutely. I have a few. And it's not, you know, when it comes down to family, they, they pass on the edge. They live mm -hmm. far enough away and it's not, but when they come home, you know, they're still in touch with family, mm -hmm. but, and, and, and perhaps they're, well, I know one spouse does know for sure. I mean, they have to know because they bring them, but when, he, when she was dating him, her mother asked her, have you told him? Because I don't need any issues when babies mm -hmm. come out a little browner than he expects them to be, you know, yeah. because you just never know what genes are going to do. Exactly. Um, but it's almost a don't ask, don't tell kind of path. Mm -hmm. If exactly. other people believe what I am, I'm going to let them believe that. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to walk around with a t-shirt on, I guess, that says. Um, Black lives matter. Mm -hmm. oh, right. <laughs> and it's not a close, you know, this is uh -huh. like, it's not like my first cousins or anything. Not, not the distant either. Like first, my dad's first cousins, you know, Mm -hmm. children or whatever and um, I mean it's it's not a I'm not talking to them on the phone every day but it, they don't ask don't tell yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's the best way to describe it wherever they are and that makes sense to offer it up how many people are still out there to this day that are still living that are past it like still living that life where they got sucked into this and now they're still living that lie yeah. There's, a, there's a really good book that I would recommend, a uh, true story called White Like Her. Yes, I have it. Oh, that book is so good. Is it? I've had it for mm -hmm. like, you know. And it goes, it goes into a lot of Louisiana history because Louisiana was a little different than all. We really mm -hmm. did have more than just black and white. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it goes into some of that history. And it's kind of what she's talking about here, too, that they were just that in-between class. And really, like my great grandfather used to say, he used to say he was a mutt because he knew his father. His father was not just, you know, a, a sexual abuser that got his mother pregnant. He had two children pregnant. Like they, I guess you could call it a relationship, but he knew his father. His father raised him until he died. And then my great grandfather said life changed after his father died because, granted, he was born in 1899. And so once his dad was not around to, bring him to where he was bringing him as a white man, bringing me his child, he was now being raised by his black mother and it was a whole new world for him. Wow. And so he always felt like, kind of like Billy was saying, didn't know where he fit. He married a black woman, he had 11 black children, or very light-skinned black children, but he never, he said, for me to say I'm black is denying my father. Right. My father was yeah. a white man who helped raise me. I mean, was my was in my life. He wasn't just someone I knew of. I knew my dad. Right. So the irony of this is that my dad's mom, she is um, Mexican Indian, and my dad's dad is black. Well, my dad's mom's family disowned her because she married a black man. And my if you saw if you saw my grandmother, she looks white. And uh, my dad my dad actually has an older sister who is white because her first husband was white so it's it's it, i can't i see it all from that perspective as well it's kind of it's very odd <laughs> you know, it, 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 it all comes full circle mm -hmm. wow that's interesting my mm -hmm. husband looks white he's from louisiana i mean he looks like a white man because everybody when i got married um you know, I didn't see him before I dated him. I used to just talk to him on the phone and he sounded very black on the phone. But we had already built up a relationship. So when I did meet him and he said he was coming to meet me, I kept looking outside for this I assumed black guy. <laughs> and I oh saw God. the person, but I thought that was a, a neighbor or something. I didn't know that was him. And I kept calling him, where are you? He said, I'm out here by your car. I said, no, I see a white man by my car. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, well, I guess I didn't tell you I'm high yellow. So um. he, looks, he looks white, but he's straight up Negro. He calls okay. me white in a, a black body. That's, that's, what he that's, 
That is so yeah. funny because I remember when I was in middle school, my um, grandparents were also very fair. And, um, and these were my mother's parents. And so uh, my grandmother was actually uh, a product of rape. You know, early 1900, mm -hmm. you know, that was going on. So, um, but my grandparents would pick me up from school. And so uh, one day, and I was at a predominantly white middle school, one day um, while I was waiting out front, some, uh, some friends um, were in some other white kids were also waiting for their parents, people's thinking. You know, but again, they were kids, so. Yeah, Leslie, your phone was kind of breaking up, so it's hard to hear what you oh. were hearing. Oh, sorry. I was wondering why everybody was so <laughs> quiet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was just saying that my grandparents, <laughs> my grandparents, <laughs> Your phone is okay. still breaking up. Yeah. Okay. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, another to circle back with Stella, another thing that the said quoted is she hadn't realized how long it takes to become somebody else or how lonely it can be living in a world not meant for you. Wow. Yeah. I was like, that nailed it, didn't it? Like, yeah. And it that's really exactly did. what we saw. Like she just was never had, she thought that this life wouldn't, make her happy and ultimately she gave up everything, everything for this and she's supposed to have the good life but meanwhile she's not happy at all so yeah you can never have a good life when you live in a lie yeah. Like, at all. yeah and trying to keep up with that it's like you're trying to, mm -hmm. trying to remember your stories and your lies and what's <laughs> happening and, it's, and the paranoia that somebody's gonna figure you out you know right. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. She was going to drive herself crazy trying to be somebody else, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Michaela had a good question. She's, I don't know if you guys have read the book Passing by Nella Larson, but she's asking, how do you think this book compares to Passing? Um, I don't know that book. I read Passing last year, the year before last, so it's so long. Um, kind of the same concept as Stella, you know. Um, but I like that this, I like this book better. I mean, Passing was written forever ago, but I like this because, yes, it focused on Stella and the fact that she was passing, but it also shows how everybody else around her and in her life was affected by her passing and how they all dealt with it. So, um, yeah, I like seeing it from p different people's perspectives and seeing their thoughts on her passing. Renee, did you guys talk about her husband? And how, you know, he, she always would say things about the, you know, the neighbors and the husband kind of would like, why would you say that? Or, you know, he just always, to me, I got the impression that not, not necessarily that he didn't see color, but it just didn't bother him. Right. So it's almost to me like why she didn't just fess up at this point. Yeah, I was <laughs> on her to tell. The 80s and the 90s were just really, at this point, we've been in love so long. Hopefully you'll accept me for me. And even if he had that attitude back then, surely he's still that person, you know, now. Um, yeah. So I, I was waiting for her to fess you know, up. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. have y'all thought about maybe it, okay, what if she did fess up and knowing he may have just, just barred her or whatever. I think one of her biggest fears is that she had accumulated no friends. She had no place to really go. Mm -hmm. Even when she went back home, it was like she didn't even fit in. So it was almost kind of like her sister Desiree, but Desiree took her bags and still went home and built a life. But she had grown so far into aging. I mean, you know, to the point where how would she, rec how would she recover? What would she do? Um, I'm, I think she probably thought about all of that. And maybe every time she thought about going to the right, 
she said, mm -mm, I'm going to just have to keep leaning to the left because it, it was just so much that she had, she, it didn't ever talk about any of her past friend, but just uh, her sister. She didn't, uh, and Loretta, but Loretta now, you know, after she found out, who knows if she would not want to be her friend too, but she really didn't have anything. Well, she knew that those people in that neighborhood would be friends with her. Yeah. And it wasn't exactly, because I wouldn't even count them as friends, because that's part mm -mm. of the life. She, mm -hmm. she didn't like them. They, that was a, wasn't a yeah. good, you know. She had to a friend was her advisor. And even her advisor was already kind of pushing her to say, what is your truth? Because like her advisor could see that she was struggling with something. Something. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think Loretta would have um, forgiven her or continued to be her friend even after she had found out that she was telling a lie. Mm -hmm. And her advisor, I think that that was a time too that she had a chance to just kind of write her life if she wanted to. She could have just walked away from that and said, because she remember mm -hmm. when her mother um, told them, came home and said, you guys are going to start working. And she mm -hmm. said she wanted to go to school. She wanted mm -hmm. to go to college. She had all these aspirations of doing those things. And now she was doing those things. She could have just totally walked away, you know, told her husband, told, you know, called up Loretta and told her or something. I, I felt like she could have got walked away from that life, but that wasn't the part of what the story was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that was not the direction Britt meant to leave us kind of hanging there. <laughs> I think that was totally intentional. I think she just, there's, there's some more books in there. So I feel like she just kind of left it there um, to maybe build on lab later or maybe not. Well, if mm -hmm. you think about it, Stella is hanging. She's still hanging too. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's still hanging in this world or she's lying about she doesn't have closure yet either. She's because because even though you know she's found out, she knows all these different things. She still, if she's still living as she has been, she'll never have closure. Right. right. You can't close on a lie like that. Yeah. That lie is tiring. Just reading the whole. Oh. <laughs> I mean, like I, that was a full time job. That lie. And I thought she was going to exhale when she told her, you remember when the daughter got into the car and it was like 11 minutes drive or something. Mm -hmm. And I really thought after she told the daughter, you know, life was going to change. And then I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, she's still with this lie. So. Well, that's, and that's kind of why I wanted to know more about Stella's story after that point, because even now she has someone to confide in, you know, now that her daughter knows. But, yeah. I felt like, there might be more to that. Even if she didn't tell the husband, at least she could kind of talk to somebody about her experiences and the things that she's dealt with for all these years, you know? Yes. But can you imagine telling your child something and your husband doesn't know? Like, that's still living in a whole world of a lie. Like, I'm what? putting the daughter to and lie. fear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Ooh, that's <laughs> well, it, and as a daughter, I'm going to tell my dad. I was a daddy girl and like daddy is something you should know about. <laughs> Oh God! So like my five year old daddy, <laughs> she's telling everything. <laughs> yeah. Even his mother, even her husband's mother, um, thought that there was something different about her. Yeah, she, she said her there was yeah. something that she was holding back. So his, yes. his mother picked up on something mm -hmm. and he was like, no, no, no. Hey, a, lot mother, mother, a lot of mothers say that and they don't be knowing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the mother said she probably came from poor white trash. Yeah. Or back, backwoods yeah. trash. No, I think she said backwoods trash. Yeah. She didn't say what, what code. Well, let me ask you all a question. Why do you all think Jude was so obsessive with Stella, but yet would not let her mom know what was going on? Like, I could understand being obsessive, but letting your mom know, because you see how over the years it destroyed your mom not knowing where her sister is. But I didn't understand why when Jude first located Stella, she didn't tell her mom and why she kept it a secret. Hmm. I Probably because Stella was so mean. 
I think she was protecting. I think she was protecting her mom. She yeah, didn't want to hurt so her mom's no end to know that her sister is right over there, and mm-hmm. she doesn't want to reach out to her and doesn't want anything to do with her. I think her mother was upset as she was gonna be. I think if she had to know she would have been more upset. I just think she was protecting them all. And and she mentioned, I feel like she mentioned at some point that she wondered if Desiree could have done what Stella did, but for her. Yeah. Once she had her as a daughter, she couldn't change her, you know, she, she, I I feel like there was a piece in there where she said something like that. Could my mom have done the same thing? I think she did. I kind of held her back. But Stella, um, Jude, I, I was um, hearing her truth also, the struggle she went through trying to fit in and it's kind of like some of what um, you ladies talk about, but I mean, to the point where she said she shaped, um, she died, what is, what is it? The grandmother gave all this dye stuff. Oh, she <laughs> was, <laughs> <crazy stuff. laughs> yeah. she realized the color still the same. Uh, oh, because- who came home and was like, why are you so greasy? <laughs> oh, <Mom. laughs> uh-huh. oh, maybe it was earlier. So. <laughs> yeah, it was Desiree said that. Yes. Um, why are you oh shouting like that? She, yeah, she, I, I thought that was so, she said she just gave up because she, she really was trying and to fit in and to have thought her a bleach. She was trying to bleach her skin color. Uh, they call her blue black. She was like blue black. <laughs> and the way they pronounce it in the um, the way they say it when they're on the way when um, Desiree and Jude is young and they're walking down the road to go to the mother's house the first time. The way the townspeople see her and describe the child is blue black. It's blue. really funny. It's really funny. Mm-hmm. I love blue the blue black. black. <laughs> how did they? Blue how black. Did they, how black did they say that? Blue. How did they say the last name on the audio book? I wondered if they said it like we say it here. What was the last name? I forget the last We yeah, say but... Veen. I don't remember. Vines. I think they said Vines. Vines. Mm-hmm. I've never heard of that last name before. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a, you know, we got all those many crazy French names. names here. So many last names. Mm. Yeah, they call it Vines. We call it Veen. I just wondered. I said, I wonder how they said it. Mm. Um, so yeah, for me, I'm definitely going to read up on more books that deal with passing. Um, this is further intrigued. I mean, I read Passing, but it's such an older book. You know what I mean? I feel mm. like there's more out there now that I'm going to, I've had that book forever, Jess. I'm going to read it. Oh, read it. Who that is book. it by? Who is it? Um, it's a memoir? I can't Let's even remember it. her name. Her mother, passing? her mother passed. Hold on. Her mother, her mother passed. Her mother was in New Orleans called white mm-hmm. like her rosa and mm-hmm. her mother was from new orleans and passed and it's not giving it away to tell it because i think it's in the in the blurb of the book she ends up confessing it but she said you can never tell anybody this because the daughter started doing the genealogy research she just wanted to know because her mom was just like desiree i mean like stella wouldn't say much about where she was from you know, like there were clues here and there. They didn't know any family. The only other family they knew were passing too. And it was like an aunt in Ohio or something. Yeah. Mm. So the daughter kept digging and digging and going to the birth certificates and things that she finally saw in. And she's the like, what's the end? What's the end? Oh, the blue you know, sky. and oh man, that book is so good. But it gets, I enjoy it because she gets really deep into the, the um, history of <laughs> the different classes of people that existed in Louisiana, all based, you know, you had Creoles, you had Africans, you had free people of color and you had white and just had a whole different mix. But after Louisiana was purchased, the Louisiana, after the Louisiana purchase, the United States said it's one or the other. We don't have any of this inner, inner group kind of thing. You got to you either black or white. Yeah, the book um, "White Like Her" is by Gail Lukasik, and uh, mm-hmm. Kayla posted it in the comments. I don't know, y'all might not be able to see my. It is oh, excellent, okay. y'all. My phone. It's like a memoir. It's a memoir. Yeah, yeah. It's about oh, it's about oh. her mother. It's really about her mother, but and and but you know, well, I'm I'm not gonna go too far because she it gets really good, but it it is so good, 
and but she was the daughter was doing the digging and was just like Kennedy. Well, tell me this. Well, what about that? And the mama was finally like, "Look, okay, fine. Yes, I am, but you better not tell nobody." <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's um it's on audio also? Cuz I like to do that. I, I listen to it. I feel like I did listen to it. I listened to it on the library on Libby. Okay. But I I, I listened to it. I'll check for that. And Michaela also made mention of another book about colorism, which is The Bluest Eye. Um, actually, today's the anniversary of Toni Morrison's death. Of oh, was it today? Yeah. But didn't we great. do her, uh, Renee? Didn't we do we The did, Bluest we Eye? We did Tula earlier in March. Um, we did this year. But we um, never did The Bluest Eye. No, but a oh. plug. Um, when I was on the Stacks pod back in 2018, I covered The Bluest Eye with Tracy on her on her um her podcast so if you go for to the stacks pod you can find uh, my commentary and tracy it was the first time we had ever read morrison so it was kind of a cool podcast to cover that but we did cover the bluest eye great read mm -hmm. um that was my introduction to tony and um also i posted something in the group today tracy actually launched a podcast with Britt bennett mm -hmm. um, today so i posted that in the group for you guys to follow up um they talk about the vanishing half and they also talk it talk about hbo and the, the deal that she mm -hmm. just signed. So that's probably a good follow-up um for that another movie that comes to mind if you guys haven't watched it is imitation of life um, oh I yes it was one of my mom's favorite movies ever in fact i think i bought her no she had the vhs of it and i think sometime for christmas i ended up buying her the dvd because she absolutely loves that movie she always says when I pass away, my funeral needs to be like that. That song needs to play. Like, so I just grew up, and, and I need to watch it again because it's been that long. I've probably not watched it since I was like a kid or a teenager, and it probably really didn't hit home like it would now. So I think I'm definitely going to watch The Imitation of Life. If y'all have not seen that, it's about passing um, a daughter. Her mother's a maid, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Her daughter passes and stuff like that, and pretty much has wants nothing to do with her mom. Um, until she passes and then it's kind of like hits her like why did I do this wow. kind of great you know, really good movie. you know really another good. one and they it, it was it's it's on the problematic list now but in the help remember the <laughs> the maid who who they sent away her daughter looked white in the book mm. and that she yeah. came to the house and they didn't realize who she was yeah. and she was you know inserting herself yes in yes she was but in the movie they just made it like she just came to the house saying i'm gonna be in here and y'all can't keep me out of here it right. was much different in the book mm -hmm. and i felt yeah. like that was a change that was odd to make because she didn't have enough time to do it in the movie i don't know but because she was passing when she first got there they would welcome her on in the house and everything and then all of a sudden they were like wait a minute you're Are not you gonna be here um, spencer's character was passing in the book no. No. no, it was no. um, the, it was the, yeah, her daughter. Oh, okay. Her daughter was that years ago, so I cannot remember. Mm -hmm. It was different in the book, and I was like, mm -hmm. I don't remember either. The hell? I remember because I because I, I saw the movie before I read the book, mm -hmm. and then when I, I read, read the it. book, I was like, Yeah, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you always got to do the, the book. book first, yeah. and mm -hmm. I, thought yeah. it was, I thought it was a strange change because it helped tell the story and the absurdity of how they were acting because y'all were accepting her into this lunch party or whatever it was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as she was a white woman and mm -hmm. then when she told you who she was then you had a problem with it i don't remember i don't remember all the way but i remember she looked white mm -hmm. there's then, some things the, changed up a lot yeah because i mm -hmm. read it but in the movie she just kind of starts coming in the house and so it's, clearly they're gonna be like no you gotta go you know it was just a mm -hmm. different I don't know. Not saying that they should have done it either way, but so interesting. As I was pulling up the Imitation of Life, because I know it was like made forever ago, but I didn't realize that it was made or came out in 1934. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine in those times, like for it to come out in the 30s and like to speak on a subject like this of passing and bring that awareness to people, but also wow. to have black and white people acting in a movie like that's that just blows yeah. my mind. The time period that it was, you know that it came out because wow <laughs> where is that Renee? Where, where is it where is it on um amazon i mean where I'm can seeing, i find it you can buy Netflix? it on youtube i'm seeing amazon prime video has it for free oh, okay. 
Yep. I probably will watch it this week just because it's my mom. I mean, my mom loves this movie. She probably has the DVD. I could probably go steal it. I like it a lot too. I haven't seen it in a long while, but it's yeah, really same. It's yeah. probably it's been a couple decades. Of life. Okay. Yes, Imitation of Life. Um, yeah, that's the movie title, Imitation of Life. Yeah. Which is very interesting. I had no idea that it was made in the 30s. Like, that blows my mind. Yeah, that's, um, that's something. I think that their descendants are still getting royalties off of that movie. Wow. <laughs> so, and oh, the, I got I to gotta watch it tonight, then. <laughs> I think the lady, the, the mother just died a few years ago. Oh, wow. I feel, really? like, I feel like she was still the lady who played the mother. Louise Beavers? Yeah, I feel like she just died. Let me see. I think you're right. I remember seeing that. Well, what I'm seeing on, and who knows, it says 1962. Oh, it was when she well, died. Yeah. Okay. Now you know there were two <laughs> different versions. Oh, okay. It was re. It was there are two of them. It was remade in the 50s. I was about to say because I remember seeing the version. I have a like DVD it wasn't black and with white. both of them. Yeah, I have the DVD with both of them. So you're probably talking about the one in the 50s, which is probably the one that I'm more familiar with. Yeah, I was about to because yeah. when, with, the, when you're referring to the 30s, I'm like, I didn't see that in black and white. <laughs> right. Okay, so which like, one am I going to be thinking? Like, y'all talking about a different at. movie. Okay, you need that's to look the one, at the one um, from, from 1959. Yes. Look for that one. Okay. okay. Juanita Moore was the lady. And yes. she, she died recently. Okay. Well, yes. recently. She died What's in 2014. Uh, uh, Juanita Moore. She oh, was 100 okay. when she died. And wow. Lana, Lana Turner played the daughter. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll look for, for those characters. I didn't realize it was a novel first, too. Hmm. Oh, there's a. I like to read novels before I read movies. So, I, is it in the library? Probably. Well, uh, I'll look now I would like to read that. Yeah, me too. I like to. I was waiting to hear if, if it had one, but it didn't seem like there was one from the conversation. So, but if there's a novel, I'll look it up. So, wait, was Mahalia Jackson in the original one? And I'm assuming. No, she oh, was no, in the one from '59. Oh. Said, Okay. You're saying it that funeral. Okay, I'm gonna have to yeah, go watch it. Saying it that part. Okay. And did she just sing at the funeral when she was mm -hmm. on it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's my mom. I'm gonna have to watch that now. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Um, and I think there was an article that was posted um a couple days ago too about passing, and then there was a bunch of I think books that reference um passing so if you guys are interested in finding more materials on it mm -hmm. that there's there's some posts in the group but yeah i loved it so okay. y'all loved it too it was Got some good picks yes um so speaking of that and then you guys know that this is coming up <laughs> I love, I love Amanda Seals. I love Amanda Seals, and I've been holding yeah. it reading this one forever. Um, oh, small doses, yeah. I haven't gotten the book yet, but I the just love audio her. Audio book is wonderful, and it's only on Audible. So if you're looking for the audio book, <clears throat> it's an audio Audible, uh, whatever they call it, original. Um, I have that. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm about to download that now. Yeah. Then. <laughs> so and I, it's <laughs> when I was like, I don't know if you've had a chance to read the book, but it's like she's got so many cool little illustrations yes. and it, I mean it talks about everything from stereotypes to being booed up um you know, sex it talks about everything in here so I just imagine that I'm going to be laughing the entire time listening. I might need the actual book on that one I think I'm gonna need that yeah it has now. a I'm lot of like <laughs> I'm, I plan on to listen to it but also follow along on the book because there's so many different illustrations oh yeah I'm gonna have to order it too as I, as, I, as I roll over here to make sure I don't have it because I'll do that <laughs> and I, I, I think we all do <laughs> that massive library you got back there look um, your house. Uh, that's, that's your my dream to build one like her. hers oh my, my house. House. yeah you? we bought this house literally for this room like like you know we scroll on red fin or whatever and it was like first picture is the front of the house second picture was like the foyer third picture is the front of the I found out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Lord, Lord, 
love it. Wow. I'd never leave with, that room. With the ladder, with the Beauty and the Beast, with the ladder. Oh, it has the ladder. <laughs> and I'm running. Yeah, that's the ladder right there. Oh the ladder God. is my favorite part. And I'm running. I'm running out of space, y'all. I got too many. <laughs> oh That's God. a good problem. <laughs> got too many. That's yeah. nice. I shelf, like that. That shelf up there, it needs it needs the brackets need to be fixed. So once I can fix that one up to put books on it, I'll I'll be a little bit better. <laughs> and then like some of the, like this one down here at the bottom, you can't see. I just have pictures and stuff on that one. So I'm I'm not using all of them really, but yep, that's my wow. Cool. Nice. Okay. It's in alphabetical order. The first shelf is all general fiction. My middle two shelves are my black fiction and nonfiction. And then this shelf over on over here. You should do a little a little video on your library. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she didn't say anything about that wine fridge. Oh, I, oh. <laughs> I should get hiding back there. I know it's back there. <laughs> Yeah, look at that, see? <laughs> Wine and read. <laughs> you don't ever have to leave, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Amanda does narrate small doses. She does narrate her book. She does. I started I just, listening I to it. Really, she's really, really good. Yeah, yeah she's hilarious. Oh, I yeah. just downloaded it. <laughs> so oh, I'm gonna cool. Do it cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do both because I want to see the pictures and the references to the things she's talking about. Do you about. follow her on Instagram? Her yeah, Instagram yes. is... Oh, yeah. She's and crazy. Also, for real, like... Her, she left the real. Yeah, yeah. she left. Mm -hmm. She didn't contract. sign her contract. But she didn't want to be censored. That's, That's right. knows who Amanda Seals is. If you follow mm -hmm. her, you know that she's uncensored. And so they were censoring her in a way where she couldn't talk about what she yeah. wanted to talk about the way she wanted to talk about it. So it was time to, you know. Um, her, her podcast Somebody's going to offer her a show. Too. I see it happening. She's going to have her own daytime show. Yeah. Or, or her own. like she. But I feel like she needs to be somewhere like on like a YouTube or some platform mm -hmm. where they won't censor her. Like even, I feel like even like an HBO yeah. or something will still kind of put her in a box. She needs to be somewhere where she can just be her authentic self without any censorship. Have yeah. you seen her HBO comedy special? I did. Oh yeah. my God, I died laughing. <laughs> I haven't watched that too. I haven't watched, I fell asleep on it. I started it really late at night. That <laughs> was so good. Cause I mean, she just, I was like, she could be a friend. Like she, I, I know, everything she said, I was like, yes. <laughs> Honestly, I started watching the. I mean, I've always loved the real, but I would only watch it like at home and on days off. But as soon as I found out she was coming on there, like my lunch break, I'd put my phone up on my desk and I'd yeah. be watching every day. I'd take lunch at one o'clock just so I could watch them with Amanda Seals because I love her that much. Like, so I'm excited maybe, about this book. Renee, maybe, maybe if enough of us DM her, right? You can get her in. I was looking you know, at her. I'll do it. I'm like, she hasn't even acknowledged that I posted her book on the page. <laughs> Good luck with that one, but uh, yeah. You know, and are you going to do by any chance um, Black Girls Must Die Exhausted 2 and Baby Makes 2, or did I miss that one? We have not done the second one. I've not even actually read it. Um, I know, shame, because I actually did enjoy the first one. I'm gonna be honest. I'm. I've started the second one, and I've had to put it down like two or three times. It's. It's not flowing as much as I want it to. Yeah. But I heard that it gets better as you keep going. So I just gotta power through it. I. I love the story because of Tabby being from West Virginia. I'm like I can relate to her. I can relate to T Granny Tab. I love her. Whole. I love everything about her. So I'm like, but this one is like a struggle for me. I don't know yeah. why. It's just not as good as the first one. Like the first one just like grabbed me from the beginning. Whereas this one, she's kind of, it's almost like she's just getting back into her old patterns of just self-destruction. And I just don't like that. And yeah. I, I'm hoping that maybe she gets out of it. So I guess I got to just keep plugging through it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you tried audio and see if you can get over that hump? No. I, 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 hmm. <laughs> I, don't think, the book. I, I, I just think that the book so far it's just slow so far i just i just really think it's just slow in the beginning I, i'm hoping that it picks up but I, I need a read, physical book <laughs> my friend read the second one first because she that's the friend of mine that has the um the book festival here she uh, did the and what's her name jane mm -hmm. martin yeah. jane allen she, uh, J allen yeah i look alexa jane I sent it to I was like, you should reach out to her. She's really responsive on Instagram. And so she did, and she agreed to be part of the festival. 
virtually this year. That's she was cool. going to come to Baton Rouge for the festival. Uh, but so Erica came, she was like, well, I need the book. And I was like, oh, wait, I loaned the, the first one and stuff. She's like, well, what am I going to read for the festival? So I gave her the second one and, <laughs> and she read it. She read the second one first. That's and so she, now she's like, I got to read the first one. Like she's in, she was excited about it, maybe because she, she hadn't read the first one yet. Right. She really, she enjoyed it. And she interviewed Jane on the um, the virtual festival. So ironically, like when the second one had came out, like I, I think she had tweeted something on Twitter and I responded about how I really like Granny Tab and I appreciated her character. And she had mentioned that at some point she does plan, I guess, doing another book that really explores Granny Tab's character yeah. and just delves more into her and her background. I was like, oh my gosh, I would die for that. So I'm hoping she really does that. I, I'm hoping she just wasn't just like giving me a little pillow talk a little fluff but really being serious <laughs> about it because I would just love that one. <laughs> I feel like she said that to Erica too. She cranked out the second one pretty quickly because I yeah. think we had already done I had already chosen Queenie and I kind of threw that one in there because she was going to mm. come on with us. Um, love Queenie. I think by the fall like that was April I think and then by the fall I think that October or something the second one had come out mm -hmm. so she cranks them out. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't doubt it. She'll probably come out with especially this pandemic I'm expecting a whole lot of work from authors <laughs> can, can y'all imagine though like Britt Bennett is not even 30 right and to have had two books yeah this good yeah, yeah. I am just I am here for it I am <laughs> ready for whatever else she might have coming good morning America all of that like she deserves it for she, sure. I'm happy that's yeah. good this book was really good. Did y'all yeah, see uh, really. the book club pick? Yep. Yes. Yeah. I knew she was going to pick that yes. one. I'm so Wait, excited. What's the book club foot pick? Cass. Uh, Cass. By Isabel uh, Wilkerson. She did um, The Warmth of Other Suns. Yep. That was oh. her. Mm -hmm. um, which I, I'm like, I, I, I side-eye Oprah a lot because ever since she did uh, American Dirt. American Dirt. American Dirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Deacon, like, now, now, now this whole Black Lives Matter movement, people are uh, out there. And now Deacon King Kong, Kong was really good, though. Deacon King is, Kong was good. Okay. But she picks a lot of books that were like lemons. And after it happened a few times, I dropped her book club. Did you? Deacon, I enjoyed Deacon King Kong by um, oh, James I McBride. I need that's, to another, that right. that's another passing book, but she passes the other way. Have y'all ever read that? No, his, is it? His first book, The Color of Water. Yeah. His mother was Jewish, but passed for light-skinned black because she married a black man. Wow. <laughs> and they thought their mother was black, but she was not. Well, I'm she was that. white passing the other way. <laughs> Fascinates me. And it's, it's called The Color of Water, and it is excellent. I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's, I did too. It's it's probably pretty. It's probably about twenty years old now. Maybe maybe fifteen. Years. No, it's probably about yeah, fifteen twenty years old now. But it is excellent. Yeah, I got me yeah, an yeah, Audible yeah, again, go. getting more books. Mm -hmm. That one is. <laughs> I know. That one is good read. Very good. <laughs> you said the I color never, of water. Yes. The color of water, and that's what they would say. Well, Mama, you so light skinned. She said, "I'm just the color of water." Mm. But she she wow. was she passed the opposite because she was ostracized by her Jewish family because she was in love with a black man. So she just mm. passed as a light skinned black oh, wow. woman, but she wasn't. Yeah. She it says on the cover, man. a black man's tribute to his white mother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Yeah. I'm adding that one. Oh, I've got a whole lot of books. I hope they all have <laughs> audio. Right. Because <laughs> yeah. I do a lot of audio when, like, if I'm cooking, doing my laundry, house domestic work, when I'm driving. Yep. Um, I don't spare any time. Any time I have is either audio or I do a lot of my reading when on my downtime where I physically can pick up the book. But most of the time, I'm busy. So the audio is coming really handy for me. And see, I'm the opposite now that I'm in quarantine. Um, I could listen to audiobooks forever on my 45 minute commute each way. So I would mm -hmm. knock at least one out a week. But now that mm -hmm. I'm at home all the time, it's like I really you do more reading. Force myself. Yeah. Yeah. So I really. That's me too, to Renee. Because I can't stand, like, why would I listen to something when I can just watch TV? I mean, it's mm -hmm. right there. Right. <laughs> I, 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 
I had gotten uh, out of audio books because I was listening to so many podcasts, and that's normally what I'm listening to around the me house. Me too. That's and I podcast. try to pick the books back up, and I'm like, no, I just want to listen to my podcast. Right. <laughs> but I just, so I just read the books instead. But yeah, yeah, I do. I do so many different things as far as that. So I, I'm glad you know we have different options. And then I get upset with these audibles if they don't have it or the the scribe. I got the scribe from you, Renee, when um you had said that I haven't done. Uh, is it Libro? Libro, Libro, Libro FM. And if I haven't done that yet because I've had Audible for years and. And then I use the library, believe it or not, your, your local library. Yeah, that's what you I can use. Yeah, audio use Libby. For free. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I haven't done Libby because I think when um, Renee sent it out, I tried, but you have to pay. No, then, Libby is through the no, library. No. It's free. Libby is through yeah. the library. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. Libro. She's talking about Libro. Oh, li yeah, that I have to the library. No, no. The Libby. Libro. No, Libby. L I B B Y. Yeah, that I do through the library, but the right. Libro. Libro? Yeah. It's a Libro. Libro yeah. is paid. Um, however, with my partnership, I can get you a two-for-one um, deal. So it's about the same. If you have Audible, it's the same. Mm -hmm. um, that fourteen ninety nine for the one credit a month or whatever it is. How That's why I didn't get it because I'm already paying for Audible and I've had I've been with them from like the early 2000s. So yeah. I just kept it. The only thing, the thing I can about Libro is, is you can give to your local bookstore. bookstore, your independent yeah. bookstore. So you can, when you purchase a book through the Audible thing, like I um, yeah. give my money to Uncle Bobby's in Philly, mm. the black mm -hmm. bookstore. Oh, that was awful what happened um, the other day. Yeah, so that's why I kind of laid off of the Audible. Like I love Audible, oh. but they don't give any of their money to the local independent bookstore. So we have Mahogany <laughs> Books here. We have mm -hmm. the Bar in Brooklyn. I love Mahogany Books. I've never been there, but I follow them on Instagram there. So yeah, that's like my dream place. <laughs> Mm -hmm. These independent bookstores need us so much right now. Yeah, we yeah. want to be able to walk into their stores when this is all over. So I started mm -hmm. doing that as soon as Libro came out. And there hasn't been a new book that's come out that I can't get. Mm -hmm. I always mm -hmm. go back to Audible, but Libro, I just like being able to give to the local bookstores. So my purchases that... go for the local bookstores. Right. Mm -hmm. And even aside, I mean, I've learned so much about them just from partnering with them, but they mm -hmm. kind of keep us in the loop with everything too. Like, um, they report their listenings each week so that it goes to the New York Times bestseller list. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. So well, they, I guess y'all got me sold. Thing. <laughs> got me. Audible because you, you know there are people do purse shopping. I do book shopping. I do anything related to books. That's me. I was I was in the bookstore when they were <laughs> up and running, and I, I'm I just that's just my comfort. I spend. Hundreds of dollars on books <laughs> while others spend hundreds on shoes. I'm mm -hmm. just a booker, so I'll invest into it because you, you've given good causes. I, if I do have to drop one, it'd probably be Scribe, but I like Scribe because mm -hmm. I can actually do the reading also. They have books the I can read too. Yeah. Yeah. We, don't, we don't have any, and I was talking to my husband about that the other day and kind of brainstorming about a potential business venture, but we, the, we have Two bookstores, three bookstores in Baton Rouge, all Barnes mm -hmm. and Noble. We wow. have no more independent bookstores. We don't have really? used bookstores. Wow. Barnes and Noble probably barely hanging on. But yeah. that's all we have. I mean, I remember years ago, but we when we even had Books a Million, we don't even have Books a Million anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it took hours too. I think we have yep. one in the mall. Yeah, and we sure. have we have no independent bookstores and no black. There's one independent bookstore, but somebody said. Is that place even still open? Every time I drive by, it looks like it's not. Jessica, there. why don't you be the first and open That's one? What I, well, we used to. I wouldn't be the first, but I'd be the new. My husband and I have been talking about it. Listen, Listen. Sell them, start with selling them things behind you back there. Right. I was about to say, <laughs> you can do crowdfunding with your, what you have. Right. <laughs> I mean, so many people come to me locally. Mm -hmm. Jess, I need a book on this, 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 that. And I'm like, See? that's your girl. That's you can be the go. new book guru. I, I, get paid to do this. <laughs> I look you, know? you up when I come down there. I'm taking <laughs> Look, I, now I've, I've put it out in the atmosphere other than it's just him. So That's right. <laughs> We're going to work on it. I got to make sure people can come to the store. Though. They <laughs> will, trust me. Don't even think <laughs> when about we get it. There. Put it out there, they'll come. We got to manifest that. it. <laughs> yep.
That's yeah. right. I wrote it down the other day. That's See, awesome. that's confirmation. That's right. And when you write it down, that means it's going to happen. I'm glad I said it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got my part just now. <laughs> there you go. I'm sending good vibes your way, girl. Thank you. Send the vibes. <laughs> This quick, is quick. good. Libros, L I B R O or dot F I B Libra. Or no, Libro, sorry. Yes, it yes, is. L I B R O. And what is that? The audio book store? Yes. Yes. Is it Libro? It's in Spanish, what I'm pulling up. I'm going to no, Libro FM. Dot F M. And that's oh. it. That's the URL. Libro dot F M. Okay. 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 Every quick purchase you make, they contribute to a local. Yeah, and whichever one you choose. But so you let, me send y'all that two for one, let me send y'all that two for one credit before y'all do that. So at <laughs> least the first time for new members, you can do audio books for the price of one. So let me send go ahead it. and send it for me, Renee, because I'm gonna do it tonight. Okay. Yeah, I just down. I just installed it just now. So if you can send it to me. <laughs> um. Yep. I'm gonna go. Hold on, because I sent it to someone earlier today too. Let me. Um. I'll post it in the group in a second, just so y'all. Okay. okay, cool. We'll have it on there. Um, Is that like you say? So you, for fourteen ninety nine, you get credits instead of one. So for the first time, for new members, you get two for the price, mm -hmm. and then I think going forward, you still get the one kind of like Audible. But at least with this, they get a kick. The independent bookstores get a kickback, or some of the proceeds. Um, you get to choose your independent bookstore too. Hmm. So it's um, fourteen ninety nine, like Audible. Yeah, Audible is fourteen ninety nine for one. Well, how much is Libro, um, Renee? Same. It's the same. She said. Oh, you're okay. Buy audiobooks directly through your local bookstore. Yep, and you get to choose which store you want to support. Hmm. I do Carrie's Books and More, which is our independent, our the world's. I think it's the largest feminist bookstore in the South, or something like that, but. Y'all probably is, is she in, jo is, are they in Georgia? Yes, they are. Um, oh, what is the, they're in the on the campus of what is the Francis? I can't think of the, name of the school. You have sent you have sent it before. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, um, I yeah. used to find from the lit bar. And never been, but I was just like, hey, when we were, you know, when there was the push to buy from the black bookstores, the, the three black books, whatever it was, that was who I bought from just because I said, we don't have anybody here. Well, there's one in New Orleans, but she doesn't, she, she doesn't trust the internet. <laughs> so she said, hey, I don't, do the, I don't do the internet. I'm like, ma'am, you know how many sales you losing out on if you don't do the internet? Exactly. <laughs> she doesn't trust it. <laughs> She doesn't have Facebook page, she doesn't have a website. Oh, she's got to step up her game. Oh, she's real. She said, mm, I don't do that internet thing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the name of the school because it's on in it's on a campus here in Georgia. <sighs> yeah, send send that also and I'm, I'll put them Post down. As... The group, so you should be able to um, right. Yeah, oh, them. it's in Decatur. Yeah, I remember you had put it in a while back and you, that was like the world largest you had talked about. And I was like, man, one of these days I'll get to go, but. It's so cute. It, and they, I've done one event there too. Uh, Agnes Sky, why, I don't know why I couldn't think of that. It's um, a part of Agnes Scott College. It's right on the campus. Um, Carrie's Books and More, yeah. The independent feminist bookstore, but that's who I support with my... Um, credits and things like that but um yeah but anyways i posted that in the uh group so you guys should be able to find it okay good there. um okay and i think the code the redeeming code word is magic anyway so even if you check out just put i think if you just put magic in there it'll pop up with that two for one okay okay so are we still, I know, um, I don't know if you discussed this last time because I, you know, didn't get a chance to come on. Were you still having or planning to do like a book meet? I hope so, but then the pandemic happened. So, um, yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, everything got postponed. The retreat that we had in Jamaica got postponed. Yeah, I've heard that. Life stopped. Um, but yeah, when things can get to a place where it's somewhat normal, I yeah. would love to. Um, I'd love a book to, swap. I think it was a book swap somebody had asked about. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would love for us to travel somewhere, maybe even come to Louisiana. Come um, on. I have got a nice library that we could take advantage of. Yeah, right. I, know, right? <laughs> I think that would be awesome. Yeah, cool. Just kind of like get a house or something down there and just help me in. Uh, oh my God. I'm ready to get out of this place. You know, that's a, good a book travel. retreat. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's my hope. So maybe 2021, we'll see what the world is looking like. Uh, <laughs> right now, I'm not too hopeful. Because not much has changed. And I so, saw until the presidency changes. I don't think anything's going to change. So, right. um, yeah, we'll see. Come January, maybe we can plan something at end of summer or in the fall. Jess, if you maybe if there's some big um, festivals in New Orleans, maybe that would. <laughs> Festival I season should. starts up in the spring. Jazz Fest, of course, is always the last weekend in April, first weekend in May. But okay. the French Quarter Festival is the largest free festival in the world. I think. And it's it's awesome. It's awesome. You know, not not the big acts that you would see at Jazz Fest, but yeah, it is yeah. an awesome festival. And it's in May, Mayish. But we oh we've got we've got festivals out of the wazoo. Anything you can they have a petroleum festival. Wow. Shri shrimp and petroleum festival. <laughs> the last time I came there, it was like a beignet festival. Beignet, they have a fried <laughs> chicken festival now. They've got Couple yeah. of crawfish festivals. They've got uh, what's everything to eat, right? Mm -hmm, the strawberry you, festival. You talking and food? So you talking my language now? <laughs> right. It's usually around the like like strawberries are big in Ponchatoula, Louisiana. So the really? strawberry festival is in Ponchatoula, mm. and it is wall to wall. Out, it's outdoors, but it's like mm. you can't move. Now those are the free ones. Jazz fest costs. Jazz fest is not cheap, but it is. It's amazing. If you have not been to Jazz Fest, you should go at some point in time because you just have all these stages of all these different artists and just people and food. The food is amazing. That's why I'm thinking the food. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah we got. I, came, I was on keto, I think, and it was the first time I had like I was waiting for a cheat meal, and that was the first week I cheated. I think I gained like eight pounds just in like three days. Not even. Yeah. When you went to the like water weight and stuff like that. So once you get back on keto, I probably lost like seven the following week. So I yeah. lost them back, but still, like I ate beignets probably at least two different times and everything else that you can imagine. I just I love the food there. When, when, if y'all come, there is in the in the French market, there is a place black owned. Go to Instagram and look it up too. Loretta's pralines. She has praline stuff. Uh, we call it pecan candy, but she calls them. Praline mm -hmm. stuffed beignets. Oh no! They are beignets with with like pecan candy when it's still warm and gooey. Oh my oh, gosh! In the middle of it. Okay, we need. When is? Let me know when the big fest is. Right. Hello. <laughs> That's the one I need to come to. <laughs> they are so good. She's got like crab stuffed beignets. You know, they're not sweet and savory. Oh. Y'all, that's why we that's why we have so many health issues and all these people dying of COVID in Louisiana because everybody got diabetes. <laughs> Eating all those beignets. Right. That's all I want is a beignet. Yeah. That's all I want. I love it. Awesome. Well, you ladies have been amazing. Thanks for hanging. We've talked for an hour and a half. Wow. I love it. Oh, I'm, I, I, I know what time you know, it is. I'm all for the Zoom. Even, really? day, even after even after COVID, I'm. Yeah, I like yeah. you. Um, definitely, cool. this, is, this is it. This is going to be the platform going forward. Yeah. I can still, yeah, I love Zoom. I love not having to talk. Y'all don't understand the pressure of just having to talk to y'all on live, like and just read. Yeah. Like, it's a lot to kind of keep up a chat by myself. So mm -hmm. it's so much more fun interacting with you guys, hearing your thoughts and opinions, seeing your faces. Most importantly. Um, so I'm definitely, even after the pandemic, and I'm fortunate for it because the pandemic has made this the way of life, um, Zoom calls and things like that. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be keeping up with this. Um, I love that I can record it and, you know, distribute it to social media at the same time. So there might be comments on Facebook, but I haven't really been paying attention. <laughs> but at least they can see it, you know, it's a way I fed it into the Book Girl Magic regular Facebook page and the group. So people 
were able to watch the chat and um you know and we, oh, we, I, I, is the chat watched live renee it is it's live yeah. right now yep well and I'm, sh I'm sure we are much more interactive here yeah because you're in your comfort zone yeah mm -hmm. and well and you're trying to type in all this stuff and then by the time know, you, right. type right. you moved to on to the there. next thing and i'm like well i'm not gonna do that <laughs> too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and for me it's like i have the worst memory like i could read a book and then five minutes later i forget half of the stuff that i read anyway so it's so hard for me to like be able to talk and i can't believe i did that for two and a half years <laughs> <laughs> be able to talk and like remember you know what I mean so sometimes mm -hmm. I ask a lot of questions I'm like did they cover this did they do this so mm -hmm. it's so much more helpful when you have a group of people that can collectively put bits and pieces of a you know and answer your questions um yeah someone yeah, commented on here it oh it was Michaela I see you on there <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah yeah it's still going live right now um but I I definitely like this way and being able to interact with y'all and you know a lot more fun for me for sure yeah yep. I Thank enjoy you. it. Yep. Me too. Well, i'm gonna sign off good night ladies it was so fun good night. Good night. i'm gonna go finish listening to this book now yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna sign off too because i have another meeting to start in good about night. 30 minutes i didn't good know it was night. so late hi y'all